Alright guys, part 2 of my Asus Sabertooth P67 motherboard review. So in part 1 we looked at the motherboard and its features and specifications. In part 2 I'm going to be doing some benchmarking, overclocking, looking at the temperatures and also looking at the software that comes with the board. So just a quick look over my test bed. As you can see the, piece, the Sabertooth is on the test bed. I'm running 1600 MHz G-Skill Trident memory, Core S7-2600K, SLI GTX 460s from EVGA. The CPU is water-cooled. The water block is a Swiftec Apogee XT. I have a 1TB SATA 3 Caviar Black and an Enemax Revolution 1250W. So, ambient temperature right through all of this testing is around 33 degrees 35.1 is the temperature of the coolant or 35 um, and that is all the fan speeds for this water box two fans per channel and this water box alone is cooling the CPU so total overkill on the cooling um, have a look at the other videos on my channel for more details on all of this hardware You'll find um, the other videos listed. There's quite a few on the water box, and there's part one on the motherboard that you want to check out. So I'm just trying to put you onto the tripod here because we're just going to have a look at the screen. First of all, we're going to quickly check out the software, and then we'll get into some overclocking and benchmarking. So this is um, AI Suite 2 and it's all the software from the from Asus motherboards. If you've had Asus motherboards in the past you'll be familiar with it. And they've just integrated it all into one awesome application. Now this is a little extra that you get only with the Sabertooth board. Um, it's called Thermal Radar. Now Thermal Radar is a feature of the board. Basically it's just extra temperature sensors, 12 of them in total on the board which is a lot more than you usually get on a motherboard and it keeps an eye on all these extra parts of the board which is very cool so I'm just going to click around here and show you what it can do. So as you can see as you put the mouse over each of the so this is a diagram of the motherboard and as you put a mouse the, the mouse pointer over each of these um, little thermometer thermometers um, it brings up what they are or where the temperature sensor is and then if you click on them it'll give you an explanation so I'll just let you read that that's PCI Express 1 so you can just pause that I'll just give you a, a couple of the others so this is DRAM I'll just adjust the camera and CPU so that sort of thing each time you click on one and then you can also click down here so you've got a diagram of the motherboard there, a little icon um, you can get information about the two fans same sort of thing and also the case fans as well and then yeah you can actually click setting here and you can set up fan profile so there's all the temperature sensors listed there and they go into the red when they get to a certain temperature which you'll be seeing throughout this video um, I do a 30 minute prime 95 run at default and also at 4.8 gigahertz and then I'll show you where the temperatures are at the end of the prime 95 run um, so that'll be coming up soon so that's thermal radar and there's a whole bunch of other stuff as well um, so you've got Turbo V Evo which is for real-time overclocking so you got all frequencies up there and oh, you got the BLK CPU voltage, DDR voltage, all the other voltages here very cool and then on the right hand side 
you can actually change that from the CPU information to, to all the sensors which includes voltages, um, not frequencies, voltages, RPM, fan RPMs and um, temperatures. But then you've got DigiVRM. Um, you can change all the VRM settings here that you have access to in the BIOS which is very cool. And you've also got a sensor recorder which is just awesome. Um, voltage, temperature, fan speed and also history records. So here you can set voltage temperature or fan speed and you can hit start recording um, and you can set the record duration from one hour right up to 24 hours um, and you can have 30 second intervals just amazing and then you can go back and look at, hit, at your history um, so then you've I've already showed you that that sensor and CPU frequency that comes up on the right hand side there and then you've just got my logo which is to set up the boot screen, ASUS update which is for updating the BIOS and then system information which can be very handy as well um, because here you have the motherboard and BIOS information and also detailed CPU and memory SPD information so that's the software for the board now we're going to move on to the benchmark results so that's the Heaven Benchmark. Now these are all at default settings. Um, yeah, because basically I just wanted to run some 3D benchmarks, keeping in mind that I'm only running SLI GTX 460. So there's the settings there. Metro 2033. Let's see if you can just see those, those settings there. You can pause that and have a look. Um, I won't bother showing you the detailed results, I'll just show you those ones there, that's all you need to know. And you know these are more more about the graphics card but it gives you some idea. 3D Mark 11 and 3D Mark Vantage. So, um, also, let's just have a look at the sign bench. So, the two orange results are mine 7.27 um, was at default settings, and 9.24 was at 4.8 gigahertz. Just ignore what it actually says it was at because that's incorrect the clock that it says it was at I mean so yeah 7.27 defaults and 9.24 at 4.8 so there's the benchmark results if you want me to run any specific benchmarks for you put it in the comments um, and if I get time or if I think it's a good idea I'll I'll run that particular benchmark just for you and I'll make another video. So I've just been running Prime 95 for about 30 minutes, a blend of Prime 95. Um, this is real temp, my CPU core temperatures, and there's the maximum core temperatures that they've got up to during the 30 minutes. Um, here's um, Thermal Radar, the Thermal Radar software. So you can see all the temperature sensors on the motherboard. There's a diagram of the motherboard there. Um, and you can see that after 30 minutes, two of them are in the red. One of them being vCore 2 and the other being USB 3 2. I've got a USB 3 hub plugged into that. I've got a lot plugged into it. Um, and because it's near the VRMs, it gets a lot of incidental heat. Uh, it's also near the CPU, so I guess that heats it up a bit as well. But you can see that USB 3.1 is, you know, the temperature of that is fine. So it's only because I've got things plugged into it, I think. So, you know, relatively stable, all the temperatures. The fact that they're in the red, you know, it's not that bad. It doesn't really mean a whole lot to me. So that's how it fared at default settings under maximum load for 30 minutes. Let's see how it fares at 4.8 gigahertz. 
Alright, so I've been running Prime 95 for about 30 minutes uh, at 4.8 GHz CPU core voltage at 1.45 volts memory at its XMP profile of 1600 1.6 volts uh, all the um, VRM settings turned up to the absolute maximum so every single one at the maximum so this is just AI suite to show you the settings again and the voltages those are the core voltages and you can see the maximum core voltages down there that it that it reached during the 30 minutes of Prime 95 and there's A to 64 as well so you can just have a look at the temperatures and so Prime's still running it's a blend of Prime 95 so it puts a lot of pressure on all the hardware besides the graphics cards of course um, and you can see the CPU's under 100% load still uh, and the CPU's at 4.8 gigahertz now this is thermal radar, the thermal radar software and you can see the diagram of the motherboard and the red thermometers are, the, are where the temperature sensors are for the red temperatures the temperatures in the red so this is what it's reached at 4.8 gigahertz after 30 minutes of Prime 95 so not too bad at 4.8 um, I would love to test this motherboard with a downward blowing CPU fan or the assist fan hopefully in the future I can do that and I'll make another video for you when I do alright so I've just been looping the heaven benchmark for 15 minutes I'm just gonna quickly alt tab and have a look at the temperatures it doesn't like being alt tab so I'll just quit Okay, they're obviously going to drop very fast, so they haven't started to. There we go, they're just starting to drop now. So that's what they reached after 15 minutes. Now, this is at completely default settings. I, I just ignore the red. Um, you know, I think those it should go into the red a lot higher than what they are I think those red warnings are set very very ridiculously low the motherboard can certainly handle a lot higher temperatures than that I'm pretty sure the VRMs are rated to go up to 120 at least 120 degrees Celsius um, don't quote me on that one but you know vCore could really be around uh, where is that? 100 degrees Celsius without a problem. So, all right, guys. Um, I think I've covered everything I wanted to. So, as I said, if you want me to run any more benchmarks, just write them down in the comments, and um, I'll see if I can do another video for you. Just request whatever you want. Um, there's going to be a part three of the video, which is just simply. Uh, looking at the BIOS and you'll being you'll be seeing a lot more of this test bed over the next year or so because this is what I'm going to use to review all my graphics cards memory CPU coolers etc etc so if you're interested in having a look at the BIOS make sure you watch part 3 I hope I've covered everything and I hope you enjoyed the video Alright, thanks for watching guys.